Hello. Good day. Good day. I am Reverend. I'm going to be cooking for you some vegan eyes. A little potato soup today. Vegan. I'm Reverend of Vegan Soul Food. We're going to get started because it's very late. And this is my dinner, believe it or not. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make myself small. Okay, theme music off. Hope you guys are doing good today. I'm going to start by using my Rovabo Coop blender to make some onions, chop some onions inside of there. I'm going to chop our onions in there. And I've used for safety purposes, I like to put everything in and then set it in. And a lot of times it turns on. And that's, it only turns on because I forget to turn it off when I use it, but this time I turned it off, okay? So there are my chopped up onions in my RoboCoop. Robo it's so nice and quiet if you heard. It doesn't make a lot of noise. Moving it out of the way now. And I'm going to move in my my little cooking stove right now. No, I think I'm good. This is as far as I'm going to go, really. I think, I think I'm good. I might need it for this guy. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and just put some, um, some oil in here. And since I'm only sauteing, I'm going to go ahead and use olive oil. Thank you, baby. So just going to put my onions inside of my hex clad. Let's see. Okay, good. And if you have any questions, don't forget to pop in, ask me anything. Sauteing the onions. Now I have my big pile of potatoes here, but I'm gonna <clears throat> get together. Some garlic. I'm gonna press some garlic on my board right here, on this little corner right here. Okay. That's really yeah, that's okay. It's just so funny. This is my little garlic press here. Kind of roll the garlic like that. It takes off the skin. Okay, my board's a little wet from chopping earlier. Okay, 
and I'm just going to press it. Scrape it in to saute. Just move that around. Because it is late, I'm going to use my instant pot tonight, which is a good thing because it really keeps it from it, it allows me to, to have my dinner ready in like 25 minutes or whatever. Okay. So I'm sauteing that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on my instant pot so it can get warm. Because I really am running behind tonight. And I'll put that in view in just a minute as soon as these onions are done. I tend to like a lot of garlic, so I think I'm going to put a little bit more garlic in there. What do you say? What's in the carousel? Oh. What's in the carousel right now is the hex plant. Or maybe it's the garlic press. I think it's the garlic press. Anything that you see me using here, you can go through my carousel and you will find it. So I'm sauteing in my hex clad set. I really love this set. It's like a non-stick technology. I'm not really sure about how it works. I just know that it does work and it's pretty dope. Nothing comes off on this hex clad. So I don't know if you used non-stick before and you felt like some of the non-sticky part was going to come off into your food or whatever, but nope, that doesn't happen with the hex clad. I'm not really sure of the technology. I just know that it's amazing. I can clean it with steel wool and it distributes heat very nice and evenly. And basically, I'm in love. <laughs> I'm in love. Okay, so I feel like I sauteed that enough. I'm going to go ahead and undo my burner. And the burner. is the one that I have highlighted right now. I like it because it gives you a little word of hot when it's hot, but I'm going to take it away. And move my, okay, I'm going to this. Plug it in back. <clears throat> move in my instant pot. And so in the instant pot, I'm going to put a little bit more oil. First time I use olive oil, now I'm going to use some uh, avocado oil. Not much, like one or two tablespoons. I'm going to go ahead and... put things into my instant pot. So I put my onions and my garlic that I sauteed already in there. Okay. And I have it, oh, I thought I had it on saute, but I didn't push the start button. So I have to start again with sauteing it. I'm gonna put a little seasoning in. Better than bouillon on the side of here. That is also um, in the carousel. Using about a teaspoon, heaping teaspoon of that. I'm 
And this webinar bouillon, bouillon has all kinds of yummy flavors, roasted garlic, onion, um, chicken, no beef, all the things. Um, and it's just a really nice product if you want to get that deep, deep flavor. So I use it a lot. And just mixing that around. Don't want to waste any of the bouillon, so. Now I'm going to get a little a little flour <clears throat> to mix inside. Waiting for this to heat up. It's on high, so let it get there. There it is. I'm starting to hear some movement in there. We're going to make a <coughs> potato soup. Going to make a uh, Loaded potato soup, veganized. This is going to be this is vegan, of course. So I'm just mixing up the flour inside of here with the onions and the garlic and the bouillon, giving it that nice, you know, that nice flavor, and allowing the flour to cook out of there so that all we have is a little um, just nice seasoning. I'm gonna go ahead and open my coconut cream. A lot of times I would use maybe like evaporated coconut milk for this, but I couldn't find any. So coconut cream is just fine. It still gets that nice creaminess and you wanna make sure you're not using the one for drinks that has sugar in it. This is just the one, uh, just coconut and water, but just really creamy. Mixing again our flour mixture. Nice. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter in here only because vegan butter. This is vegan butter. I'm going to put a little bit in there only because it's like a loaded potato soup. So we want to make it, you know, a little bit. <clears throat> I'll mix that in there. Go ahead and put in my coconut cream, nice and creamy. Of course, this is veganized. Mix that around, let that flavor get in there. And no, it will not taste like coconut when it's done, if you were curious. The mixture of the bouillon and all the different seasonings make it so that it do, does not taste like. Um, Now, I'm going to take a little, a little garlic powder. Whoops. A little mushroom seasoning. And then I'm going to put some water in it. I'm using the can to work, get the last bits of that coconut cream out. Okay, I have 
questions over here? No questions. Just watching. So we're just letting it. It's on saute, so I'm mixing it all together. And I'm gonna put a little pepper in. So we got our pepper. I'm not gonna add salt because the bouillons I use two kinds of bouillon, so they tend to have salt. I'm gonna put my potatoes in now. And this is about four gold potatoes that I've chopped up. And I've kept the skin on skin on because I like to get the extra nutrition, which you don't have to. Completely up to you. And we're going to mix that together. I'm going to give it one little taste with my spoon before I put the meat on it. Make sure that it is what I want. Yes, that tastes good. Um, all right, so now I'm going to put the lid on it. And I'm going to turn it from... <clears throat> Um, turn it off a saute and now put it on pressure cook high for 15 minutes so I'm going to set it aside and then during that 15 minutes what we're going to do is chop up some cheese and some green onions and things that are going to go inside of the soup Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to put in this soup. This is a little, this soup calls for bacon if it's not vegan. So I'm going to use a little smoked, hickory smoked dried tarula yeast. It's not sealed yet, so I can put that, dump a little bit of that in there. And that's going to give me a little bit of that smoky meat flavor. <clears throat> now, clean off my board. Now you could also use vegan bacon in this dish. I'm just going to top it with some bacon. Bacon's are actually soy based. They're vegan. You know, a lot of the if they don't say real bacon bits, most of the bacon bits that you find are soy based. I have a question: What type of mushroom seasoning? Please. What type of mushroom seasoning? Homemade or store bought? I'm going to put it in the carousel. Give me one second. Okay, so in the carousel, I have added a 
I've added the mushroom seasoning that I use. And I've also added the smoke yeast that I use to give it that bacon flavor. <coughs> Now I'm going to start chopping up some green onion because this is going to go on top of the soup. I'm using my Cutco knife. This knife never really gets dull um but if it does there's a little there's a little thing on here that says cut co and if you take it to if you send it into the company they will um they will um sharpen it for you no questions asked as long as it has that word cut coat on it they don't care where you bought it or anything like that so that's what i love about the cut coat knife but so far see that little word cut coat on there so far i have not had any real reason <clears throat> to send it anywhere because it never goes dull um Sure, I bought some smoked cheese. I thought I bought some smoked cheese the other day. Okay. Well, I don't see it. I thought I bought some smoked cheese the other day, but this is just fine. This is, um, a sauce, I mean, uh, um, something from real life. Mature, mature something. Okay. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> chop it up a bit. Because that's going to go on top of my soup when it's done. Just some cheese, vegan cheese bits. Gonna go over top of the soup when it's done. a little bit of the smoked gouda too because it's going to give it that smoky flavor this is one that follow your heart we we'll find this inside of whole foods show them the zip up box but I, if I had time I'm going to show them a couple things that are in my carousel and also in my kitchen okay so now we have two kinds of cheese that can go on top of this loaded baked potato soup when it's done and it should melt because the key to melting vegan cheese is having a little steam or a little liquid there. That's what really makes it melt. When you try to just melt it with direct heat, you're going to have a hard way to go. But when you use a little steam, it's good. I'm going to put a little cream cheese in it as well, vegan cream cheese. And let me check to see. And I have some bacon, bacon flavored bits. Let's see if there's any more questions. Okay. All right. 
So another thing that I'm going to do for tonight is make a little bread. Okay. I have a little crunchy bread. And when you're looking for breads that are vegan, you have to read the label because they're not all, they're not all vegan, but lots and lots of them are. So not to worry. It's only four of us, so I'm only going to make eh, four slices of bread, or do you think I need more than that? You ain't too, so I'm gonna make a little more than that. Bread and soup is a good thing. <laughs> uh, that's how I grew up, eating bread and soup. And it makes you feel very, very good, especially with it getting cooler out. And I'm gonna tell you, since I discovered the air fryer, I don't like to use my toaster anymore because I put my I put my bread inside of here. Let's see how my soup is going. Now this soup should have actually um Home. You can't see me over here, bro. I am scraping up the bottom of my instant pot because it is sticking a little bit. So I want to make sure nothing's sticking. And I'm going to go ahead and put it back on. It should pressurize in, in any minute. Okay, so as I was saying, my air fryer. Great, dishwasher. Okay, I'll get that. Fryer is what I like to use now to toast. to toast. My husband's here whispering and coaching me. <laughs> like I don't know how to say the word toast. <laughs> toast okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I like to use this to toast things now. So I just put a little butter on it. I'm gonna put it in the air fryer and it'll be nice and yummy. I had this idea to warm up my pressure cooker ahead of time, but I forgot to push the start button because my littler pressure cooker, you don't have to push start, but the big one, you have to push start. So what I thought was on was not on. And this is my actual dinner, so you have to bear with me on time. Sorry, I'm not moving like TV time or edited time because this is real time of my real dinner. <laughs> When I do a reel, I make things get done in 30 seconds. Live cooking, 
real time. Okay, I'm going to open that up and I'm going to line them in there for you. And I hope they all fit and they do not. So I'm going to stagger them just a little bit because I want them all in there. So they're going to do what I say do. They're going in. There. And I'll check on them to make sure they're okay. And I'm going to put them on air fryer for six minutes, 400 degrees. Now, it's going to go into the preheating stage. And then you'll hear a little beep to say that it's finally reached the 400. And, uh, whoa, I did it. I knocked out the, uh, the electric. Okay, just... You know how to push the button back there? Is it? Yes. Or, or is it all the way down at the bottom? back one? I think I hit it. I think it's the bottom. Okay. Switch it over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch. Whoa. Okay. Sorry, guys. I only did two things this time, but sometimes the electric goes out on this little thing here. So I'm going to move my pressure cooker to the back. I was saying you can put it here if you'd like. Oh, put it there? Okay, yeah, that's You want to go down or you want me to put, just put this one in the bag? show you my little button here let's see if you can see it okay try to put it there so <laughs> right there see that little button there when that's lifted that means that the food is at pressure so that's what it's at right now it's at pressure and when that lowers you know you can use this little valve right here to release the pressure which I don't want to do that right now but that's your pressure release okay so I just wanted to show you that little tidbit. Now we're back. Okay. So we got this going. And uh, really, hmm, my electric's out on this. Electrics out on, on that outlet. So this guy is kind of like over here. But we're going to have soup in a few minutes. Yeah, without my electric thing, it's kind of hard. Yeah, okay. So, while we're waiting for the soup to get ready, I'm going to show you a couple things that I think are cool. 
Okay, hold on. So I'm going to show the waffle iron that I have in my carriage. And it all affects how much time it's going to be. No more guessing when your waffle is done. You can also set it for how light or dark you want it. You can add a little bit more time if you find that it's not dark enough. Um, the waffles are come out very crispy, and I love that about it. And really, a whole family can be served from one pour. So these squares are so big that they're really equivalent to one serving. And that's what I love. So you don't have to be slaving over the waffle iron for too long. It's see these little um, these little gullies along the side. So when your waffle mix spills out, which happens to all of us, you don't have to worry about it spilling onto the counter because it just you can just scrape that off. Um, it's very good. And when your waffle's ready, it lights up and it beeps. So I love this waffle. Lost contact for a minute, but I'm going to get my other screen back going. Who the heck knows? Anyway, this is another, in my carousel, I have another knife that you see here. It's, a, it's called an herb rocker, and I use this a lot to literally cut my herbs. It is a beautiful thing. Um, it cuts up all my... Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back. Hold on, let's get this. It's in here. Okay, good. So, as I said, this is my herb rocker. It's in the carousel. It's uh, by Two Knife. I love this one as well. Um, I really am in love with all my knives. When you see me use things here, you know, I'm in love with them. This one I use to cut up a lot of my herbs, and you've probably seen me use it on the internet, but this is it. Um, hmm? What'd you say? Oh, yes, okay. And we're just kind of waiting on the soup right now. Let's see. Okay, so right now I cannot move this lid at all because it's at pressure and it's cooking. So when it's at pressure, you cannot move the lid at all. So that is the beauty of pressure cooking is that you, um, the beauty of pressure cooking is that you're getting all the nutrients in here. You're not getting cut out of anything. You're not, no steam, your, your nutrients are not going out with the steam. And so that's what I love about pressure cooking. And that is the reason why it also goes so fast, why you can cook so fast, because the pressure cooker. So that's why I always recommend, I got my brother and sister-in-law one of these for Christmas because they do a lot of what I call rat race kind of thing where they're, you know, they're run out in the morning, take their son to school, work their jobs, all of that kind of stuff in. At the end of the night, they're tired, and a lot of times they eat um, 
a lot of times they eat takeout. And when I discovered the pressure cooking, it changed my life and I didn't have to eat takeout anymore. So I definitely wanted to get one for them so they could have things like stews and greens and quick things, spaghetti, all that kind of stuff uh, quickly, like ready to go. So let's see, we've been on here now. I can't tell how long we've been on here, but not very long. And I'm running short on charge on this one. Where's that white cord? And oh, your bread chicken. Oh, it looks good. Though. Okay. All right. Forgot about the bread. Woo. Okay. Be very careful. No, it's this one. And be very careful with it because it might knock that other camera out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, let me see. On the other side. No, it's on this side, babe. It's on this oh, side. Okay. All right. Get the bread. I got the bread. So here's our bread. It's nice and uh, toasted, beautiful, and ready to go for tonight's soup. Now, I feel like the soup is probably done. Let's see how long it's been cooking. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Whoa. I set it off. I set it for, um, I set it for 25 minutes. And I feel like it's probably ready to go. So I'm just going to let it go ahead, come down to pressure because I'm ready to eat. And really because the tomato, the potatoes are so thin and wasn't, most of the stuff was mostly cooked. I really feel like it didn't need that much time because the pressure really does cook things fast and high heat, high pressure. And so that's the whole um, reason why we use a pressure cooker. Now I'm just going to show you just a little liner there that I use for my smaller pressure cooker. Because I have a small one too. Just while we're talking about waiting for the soup to be ready, I want to show you my small one. So this is my big guy and this is my little guy. So when I'm not doing too much, I'll use this guy. And I bought this special liner for it. It's a ceramic liner, but um, it came with a stainless liner. Let's see if I can find this one. Should be in my carousel somewhere, but who knows where. There. So it came, I bought this one, this liner separate, but this is the guy that I use most of the time when I'm just doing like two or three people, small dinner. This is the, the liner that it comes with automatically, the stainless steel one, and I brought an extra one which is in the carousel. So I just wanted to show you my little one. And if you're, you know, it's not many people, this is a nice little personalized one to have at home, right? Very easy to carry. Um, if you needed to take it to potlucks, it's just for a couple people. And I love this one a lot. The big one I use when it's more of us that we're gonna eat for a couple days. I anticipate us really loving this soup. So, I use the big one so that I will have enough soup for us to eat later. Okay, so my guy should be off soon. I'm going to go ahead and hit the press of the release. You can see all that steam coming out of it. But releasing that steam is going to make that little silver thing that I told you go down and then we'll be able to have soup.
We'll have soup very soon. I already got my bowl ready. Let the pressure release. There we go. Our pressure has released. Now let's see what our soup is looking like inside. Let's give it a stir. We'll move it so you can see it. There you go. So nice and thick and I'm going to do one last thing and that is use my immersion blender right now I'm just scraping up the bottoms anything that's in there that needs to come out of the bottom we're gonna make sure it integrates with the rest of the soup it's nice and silky already it's a great looking soup. You see that? It's nice and silky already. I'm just going to use my emergency blender to, to blend it up a little bit. I'll put this in this blender in the carousel in a minute. I still want it to have some texture, so I don't want to blend it all the way. Yeah. That looks yummy. I think it's ready. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put that emergence blender in for you just a minute. So if you're interested in that blender that I just used, I just put it inside of the carousel for you. Another thing too, at the beginning of the carousel, do not um, forget to look at my cookbooks. Um, if you're wondering how do I know all this stuff about cooking, I've written several recipe guides. Uh, I've been eating plant dominant for 30 years. So I'm basically I'm giving you all the things that I know that I learned from my grandmother who ate plant-based for 50 years and then me I've been doing it for 30 years so I'm basically giving you all my secrets everything that I know in those recipe guides so if you want to learn how to be a great plant-based chef at home definitely check that out so what I'm gonna do what I'm going to do is put a little cheese on top, a little vegan cheese, because it's loaded, right? And I'm going to put a little potatoes, and potatoes, <laughs> what is this? Um, green green onions. onions. <laughs> and also I'm going to put a little bacon on there. Now you could use vegan bacon, but I'm using bacon. So there we go. Um... I'm going to pick that up and a little bread on the side. And there we go.
loaded potato soup with some bread in the air fryer and the pressure cooker. There we go. Okay. So let me just, uh, there we go. So thank you for hanging out with me today. And I hope that I don't want to tilt it too far, but this is what I made. Um, load of potato soup. Um, and it has a little vegan cheese, a little green onion, a little bagels on top, and also some nice crusty bread on the side. Huh? And I'm going to, it's gone. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cue the music. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time when you want to cook with Brooke, vegan cooking. Catch me here on this channel, so do not forget to follow me if you want to be.